So we get praise, esteem, and honor to the Most High Yah, but where Yahu Shah Hamashiach this day, and John five thirty nine says, "This search the Scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Elohim in you." If another shall come in his own name, him you he say, I come in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and not the honor that come from Elohim only? So Exodus 23 and 1, that's the chapter we in as of this moment. We're in the 23rd chapter of Exodus. Maybe after this one here, it may move around. No, nah, we probably do chapter 24. We may move around to another book and do two chapters and then go to another book so we don't be in a monotonous, monotonous state. Nevertheless, the reset that we see here in Exodus 23 and 1 is, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. So we have to ask, sit back and look at this. And determine what he's trying to tell you and what he is instructing you. Abigail, ain't nothing wrong with you. The first thing when we look at with false report and no, Abigail, I cannot hold you at the time. If we, when we look at rays, of course, that is the word NASA, NASA, NASA however you want to. Pronounce it and it means to carry or to take or to support or to aid or to assist or to be exalted or anything of that nature when we look at report That word is Shema and it is a hearing So what we sitting back looking at is you're not going to lift up false words Nor are you going to put your hand with wicked people to be an unrighteous witness Meaning you are not going to put your hand with people who are going to give evidence of telling lies. Why is that important? Deuteronomy 19. I'm right here, Gail. I ain't going nowhere. Deuteronomy 19 and 15. And after we look at Deuteronomy 19 and 15... I guess Proverbs chapter 6 will be fine. One witness shall not rise up against any man for any iniquity or for any sin, and any sin that he sin. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So can't one person stand up and say anybody committed any sin? It had to be two or three people that bear witness to that sin. You know what I'm saying? You can't even do it. It's not going to be accepted. You have to turn around and stop looking at it in the construct. Uh, and we're talking about dealing with matters of judgment of those who serve the word. Let's listen let's to it again. One witness. Hold on. Hello. Shalom. So let's look at it again. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin and any sin that he sinned at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So you can't run up and say somebody did something and you don't have two or three witnesses that bear witness to that if you're going to bring that accusation against them. If we talk about dealing with judgment in the body. See, let's look at something as, as, as we pertain to this. We talked about this recently. We'll look at it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We talk about dealing with matters of judgment amongst believers, not people outside the word. You have to learn how to know how to deal with things inside the word before you even be concerned with people outside the word. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1. So you can't go around accusing people of something and you the only person who's bringing that witness. It has to be another witness to go along with that. You're going to have to bring something else along with it. He said, dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the Kadeshim? Do you not know that the Kadeshim shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? 
Know ye not that we shall judge Malachim? How much more the things that pertain to this life? So you have to now. We and, and I'm trying to I'm trying to get to a point. I think we talked about it recently, but we're gonna go back over it again because why is he, why is he mentioning this precept? Is number one, you supposed to understand that you are not supposed to put your hand with nobody who you know is lying. That's the first thing. Because if you know somebody lying and you complicit with them, you are just as, if not even more wicked than they are. Do you know what I'm saying? You ain't supposed to do that. And he tell you, clear as day, not only that, do not be a, a, a participant in anything where individuals are raising a false report. Number one, he tell you don't lie on nobody, nor be a participant in anybody who finna go lie on somebody. Let's look at 1 John, not not 1 John, I meant to say uh, Isaiah chapter 11, and then John chapter 7. See, this is one of the first things, because you already know what I hear, man, Numbers 23 and 17, y'all say clear as day, he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of a man that he should repent. Because Yahuwah hates liars, he despises them with the passion, because they're contrary to who he is. Because he's, remember, remember we, we talked about this recently? In Exodus 33, well, we talk about it a lot. When he proclaimed his name, he said he was full of goodness and truth, faith, firmness, soundness. You know what I'm saying? He's a rock. He's solid. He could be trusted. You know what I'm talking about? This man is not going to lie to you. So when you turn around and you lie, you're doing something. That's why it's abominable to him. That's why he despises us and can't stand it. Abigail, you've already told this book already. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 4. Verse 3, act, verse 2 actually. Sit down. It says, And the Ruach of Yahuwah shall rest upon him, the Ruach of wisdom and understanding, the Ruach of counsel and might, the Ruach of knowledge and the fear of Yahuwah, and shall make him quick in the understanding and the fear of Yahuwah, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall judge the poor and reprove the equity of the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So let's look at what would allow him to be able to judge properly. Number one, he would have the Ruach of Wisdom, which as we know is Kokma, which means he would have the skill in war. If you do not even know how to skillfully fight against sin and the world then wisdom is not inside of you the only way you can get that skill is a book tell you and all that I get and he say get wisdom and all I get and get understanding so that's the next thing that he says that this man possesses his understanding get your hand out of that plug the next thing he possesses is the understanding, which is the insight. We know from previous dealings that in, in Luke chapter 24, he says that he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay, I'll give you an example of, of insight, which would turn around and give you the, the wisdom to be able to fight. Just because this is just a conversation I had today, I'm trying to be brief as possible. Okay, I, I, I shared a photograph of a, of a brother stating, that love is means sacrifice in Hebrew. Do you know what I'm saying? My cousin has a little his thoughts on what is actually Hebrew and what is not. Uh, so he says that the Most High has given him the name Hezekiah, and that's neither here nor there. So he asked what that name meant, spelled out, and then by definition, by definition Hezekiah means Yahuwah is my strength. Spelled out, you get the cot. Uh, the Zayin, the Kuf, the uh, the Yad, and the Hey. So when you spell it out, it ends up telling you, "Behold the hand that is cut." Behold the hand that is cut, or behold the hand that is wounded. Now, it love is sacrifice, and Yahuwah is your strength. So then, that would take us back to Luke chapter twenty-four, and about verse thirty-six. When he tells them to behold his hands and his feet after his resurrection. Or John chapter 20 verse 27 when he told Thomas to stick his hands through the wounds in his hands so he could behold that. Because that's where your strength emanates from is from his sacrifice. Because Paul told you 
that he would rather esteem in the infirmities of Mashiach that the power of Mashiach might rest in him. Therefore, he esteems in his infirmities and in his weaknesses because the strength comes from the wounds because the book tells you by his stripes you are healed. Isaiah 49 and 14 tells you how this man, well, verse 16, my apologies, tells us how this man says we are engraven on the palms of his hands. Or how Zechariah 13 said these are the wounds that I received in the house of my friends. So where do you be able to devise to be able to have skill to war in the battle? Because he told you to arm yourself likewise with the same mind of Mashiach. Because he suffered in the flesh. So likewise if you suffer in the flesh, you will be able to cease from sin. That you would no longer live your life to the lust of the flesh. But to the will of Elohim. This is where you will be able to have skill to know how to fight. But in able to be at that skill to know how to fight you have to have the knowledge of Allahim and once you have the knowledge of Allahim you actually have to apply it and once you apply it then you know how to fight once you know how to fight then you can be able to get the insight and once you get the insight then you can be able to judge properly and if you do not follow those steps you will not be able to judge properly you will continually do what you want to do you will continually to see what you want to see and you will and you will damn yourself I mean there's no other way around that you will damn yourself and you will have no one to blame when you stand before this man and he opened the books and he tell you, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. So we can play around with it and joke with it and skim with it and make excuses with it. But this man is going to tell you that he don't know you. And if that don't scare you, I don't know what to tell you. Hello? Yeah, What's happening with you, so because that and then he says also the knowledge counsel and might so if you have counsel you have recommended course of action you're going to follow his instructions because Isaiah chapter 48 tells you that I am Yahuwah who teach thee in the way that you should go so I'm telling you what you ought to do but see we don't want to do what he say what, what we ought to do we want to do what we want to do and we want to mix what we want to do we want to take the profane and mix it with the Kadash and you're going to go to hell with that because you look warm, you're not hot, you're not cold. You can't mix it. Either you all in or you all out. It's no in between. I don't know why we think it's an in between. There's no in between. Then he also states the knowledge that we already mentioned and the fear of Yahuwah. And that's the number one key thing. That people don't fear Yah. And this also takes us back to why Hebrews 5 say that those who are strong, are, are full age, are strong meat, can discern by reason of use between good and evil. You can't judge because you don't use it. And because you don't use it, he say you got to give the more earnest heed to the things that you've heard lest they slip. So then you begin to forget things because you're not listening and you're not using it. And because you don't like to retain this man in your knowledge, he will give you over to a reprobate mind. And this is how you end up raising your hand with people to do a false report and, and walking around with people who you know are liars. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to think about those type of things. You have to you have to you have to weigh that out completely. Every step we take can pull us closer to the kingdom or closer to the lake of fire. The choice is yours. Cause it's not no game. It's not no joke. To show life. Play around with it if you want to. And be somewhere you don't want to be at. John chapter 7, verse 20. Cause going through this law, you're gonna get a perspective on how you who will roll. And you who ain't down with liars in no shape, form, or fashion. He don't like liars. He despises them. You know what I'm saying? And the worst thing, I, the worst thing that you could ever see is a nigga who claimed to be in the word who will look in your face and shoot you one. We gonna go to the Book of Proverbs to talk about how he feel about about a liar a couple times and a couple places, just a couple places. We gotta get to John chapter seven. I know I mentioned Proverbs chapter six. We're going to get around that too. And then we're going to fit. But we're going to fit a Deuteronomy chapter 19 before we uh, do all of that. After we read this John chapter 7. Just praise y'all for the word. It's better to be a true witness than a liar. I tell you that. I tell you that. It's better to be a true witness than a liar. You won't be no liar. If anything in this life you don't want to be, boy, a liar is not one of them. And that's probably what we just going to zero in and focus on, just dealing with this one preset in itself. And not even move forward to nothing else because it's Wednesday. So it ain't no need to try to jam everything. John chapter 7 and verse 14. John chapter 7 and verse 14. 
Now about the midst of the feast, Yahusha went up into the temple and taught. And the Yahudim marveled, saying, How know this man letters, having never learned? Yahusha answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Elohim or whether I speak of myself. He that speak of himself, seek his own esteem. But he that seek his esteem that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the Torah? Yet none of you keep the Torah. Why go ye about to kill me? These people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. Who go about to kill thee? Yahusha answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers, and you on the Shabbat day circumcise a man. If a man on the Shabbat day receive circumcision that the Torah of Moses should not be broken, are you angry at me because I have made a man everywhere? Hold on a Shabbat day. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And that's, I think, that's what a lot of people's problem is, that they like to judge things based on how it looks. See, they wanted to say that this man was breaking the Shabbat and not actually judging righteously according to what was actually being done in accordance to the righteous obedience of faith according to the word. See, we like to point fingers at this and point fingers at that. Like I had a conversation yesterday where an individual just told me like their perspective coming from where they were coming from, they messed around and mixed that in a new situation. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we are not able to judge righteously because we take our preconceived notions, you take your past history, you paste your past dealings, and you take that and you try to judge that into new situations and circumstances, and you usually judge wrong. A lot of times people judge wrong because they judge by their own personal feelings. Do you know what I'm saying? They're judging for themselves or they're judging for their desires in order to judge and be able to get what they want. But remember what we dealt with, the judgment is not a man, it is of Yahuwah. See, I can make a judgment and I can personally remove myself from it, even if I'm personally involved in it, because that is in the back of my mind. The judgment is of Yahuwah, it's not a man. So if I judge for myself and rule wrongly for my own selfish gain, I have to go to hell for that. What's the point in that? What are you deriving from that? Because that's a false sense of self-rewarding right there because you're just trying to comfort yourself inwardly. And that's not the way to do things. Deuteronomy chapter 19. It ain't hard. All you got to do is just line stuff up and judge it by the word. Take your feelings out of play. Take your desires out of play. Nobody really cares what you want. Nobody cares how you feel when it comes to this word. You know what I'm saying? I certainly don't care how you feel. You know what I'm talking about? When it comes to the word, your feelings are inconsequential as far as I'm concerned. When it comes to y'all's word, because they'll take you what Paul told you. Say, if I was to be a pleaser of men, I wouldn't be a servant of Mashiach. Am I to please men or Elohim? Is it better to serve man or Elohim? See, people get it twisted that if someone is a servant of Elohim, that they're supposed to capitulate to the, all the desires of the people. That they both to take into account all the feelings and emotions of the people. And that is not accurate. Do you know what I'm saying? Because Mashiach never did that. Do you know what I'm saying? Having mercy and compassion is not, it's not the same thing. It caring about how somebody feel and they dead wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? That's not the same thing. And that's what we come in in this society is we feel like somebody's supposed to come make us feel better and lift us up when we dead wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to take some correction, some chastisement, and then this person is supposed to understand your, at least for me, I will try to understand your thought process to be able to come up with a practical solution so you don't make that same choice again. Now, once you go to making that same choice over and over again, then of course at that point, it is no longer a mistake. This is a pattern of behavior, and I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? I'm straight. I'm good. I stress myself out too much, but I'm good. I'm not going to do it. Niggas not going to run me in the ground. You know what I'm saying? Not going to let it happen. Absolutely not. You could go ahead and do it. Clearly, you don't want to listen. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't want to listen, whose fault is that? That's been Yashua's problem since the day we were born. We don't like to listen. Not to the word anyway. Not to the people that this man put before you. See, I just mentioned this yesterday. 
And I've always told y'all this here too. You can get the word from whoever you want to get it to. I ain't never told nobody. Can't nobody stand before you and tell you that I said you can only get the word from me. If you don't get it from me, you start. I ain't never told nobody that. You can get it from whoever you want to get it from. Just make sure they know what they're talking about. That's it. You're supposed to make sure that you. I know what I'm talking about. So it's not like I'm telling you to hold somebody else to something that I ain't going to say that you should hold me to. Nigga, you know what we talking about. Because we all trying to get to the same spot. It don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Dudes, especially, you know, everybody know what high ISUPK kick it. You know what I'm saying? And how some other people, some people make it, or try to make you feel like that if you're not copping from them, you scarred. You know what I'm saying? I personally don't care. Because it's not my word. I don't own it. You know what I'm talking about? And what our people problem is, is the men who he sends and puts that word in their mouth. No matter who they are, or where they from, or where they located, we don't like to listen to them. Y'all know the books say don't tell us smooth, tell us smooth things. Prophecy to us lies. Prophecy deceives. Don't tell us what's right. This is what this man bear witness against his people and say that's how we operate. Do not tell us what's right. Tell me a lie. Tell me something make me feel good. That's how wicked we are as a people. You know what I'm saying? We don't, nigga can scream, nigga love to scream, I'm real, I'm this, I'm that, until a nigga tell you something you don't want to hear. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's how people problem is, until a nigga tell you something you don't want to hear. Now all of a sudden, the person that you felt like was real and solid and was this, they all man of names and they all man of this, because you don't want to hear what they talking about. Because this is what we did to our God. You need to understand that. You need to know that, right? This man came and told us something. We don't want to listen to him. This man told Ezekiel, they're not going to listen to you because they ain't listening to me. You need to consider that. Everybody scream, ain't nothing new under the sun. So I guess you should understand you the same people that operate and think the same way those people thought. What make you any different? The only thing that should make you different is your faith. And if your faith is on point, this wouldn't even bother you. If it bothers you, it's because your faith not right. Because you're selfish and you're conceited and you're proud and you're sinful and you're disobedient and you refuse to repent. Why don't you just let yourself go? Before we even did mention this, here, we mentioned love is sacrifice. Love is sacrifice according to Allahim. That's what it is. It's not a feel. Y'all doesn't have a feeling of emotion of love towards Yashara like people have. That man showed you that. He ain't told you nah lie. The master said my father's house got many mansions. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. I ain't finna shoot you no lie, man. They there. It's there. You want to go there? I made a play for you. Come on with me. Now, if you want to be there, what you going to do to get there? That's the question. Nevertheless, Deuteronomy 19 and 16. He said, if a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him, that which is wrong. And you know, we're going to mention a couple of examples for that. I know one of them y'all should know off the top and another one well both of them you should know off the top but nevertheless then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before Yahuwah before the priests and the judges which shall be in those days and the judges shall make diligent inquisition and behold if the witness be a false witness and have testified falsely against his brother then shall you do unto him as he thought to have done unto his brother so shall thou put either evil from among you and those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you and thy eyes shall not pity but life shall go for life eye for eye tooth for tooth hand for hand foot for foot now you see this saying we're going to look up that word in a minute this man says that those people in that day will make a diligent inquisition to see if those things are true a diligent inquisition not just going to go along with it because you said it they're going to fact check you they're going to fact check you let's go look and see what those words mean in Deuteronomy 19 he said they're going to make a diligent inquisition and this goes in about not judging according to appearance but judging righteously because a lot of people just judge stuff based on what somebody told them don't even know what they're talking about. The word for uh, diligent is a good, pleasing, well, the word is your top, to well, to do right, or to do thoroughly. And in this instance, it would be something to do thoroughly. Hello? And the word uh, for an inquisition is derosh, 
which is to seek or to seek with care. And then we already know Darash is the sacrifice to enter in through the door. So and and so if we're going to sit back and, and, and make a judgment, then you're going to seek with care to see if these accusations are correct. But let's look at something in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. And then we will swing to Proverbs chapter 17 and 19. And we're going to look at that. The book of Proverbs talk about liars a lot and false witnesses a lot. Discusses it quite a bit. So that's why this, uh, this evening we'll be spending a lot of time there. Because it's discussed a lot there. So it's just natural. Proverbs 6 and 16. And it says, These six things doth Yahuwah hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speak lies, and he that so discord among brethren. Anybody that stand up and lie on another person, y'all hate you. Not only if you just tell lies, but if you are a false witness. Because a false witness means you are saying that a person did something that they did not do. You are abominable and disgusting and despicable to this man. Now, I want to sit back and y'all understand. Anybody that can stand up and bear false witness consciously. It's one thing if you bear false witness against somebody because you didn't do a diligent inquisition on information and you spoke something that you thought to be fact and it wasn't fact. It still makes you a false witness, but you didn't have intent in your heart to go lie on somebody. Still bad. All that shows is you might need to do a little bit more diligent inquisition or to just hold your peace until you know all things before you speak on the matter. But, uh, if you can consciously stand up and lie on somebody, you are a wicked bastard. And clearly, the word of Yahuwah cannot reside in you. And clearly, we would know who your father is. If you can consciously and, and just stand up and lie on somebody with no shame. Know you lying on this person. And you can stand up and tell a lie on somebody, but you something else. We expect people who are not in the word to do it, but how can people in the word do that? We want to know how people in the world can do that. Let's see. Second Timothy chapter 3. So I know a lot of people saying we're supposed to be in the word. People ain't supposed to do this here. Just because people profess to serve you who don't mean they serving them in Ruach and in truth and from sincerity of heart. Have you not been reading this book? Did they all serve him in the wilderness? No. Did they all serve him in the land when they went in? No. Were they all serving him during the time of Mashiach? No. Did they serve him after? Did they all serve him after? I'm talking about people who claim. You got people after Pentecost with, with Ananias and Sapphira went up there and lied to the Ruach. And we're going to read it thinking they were lying to man and when they were lying to Yah. So I don't know why we have this illusion in our brain that just because a nigga said they believe in Yah that they solid. That don't mean anything. He said by their fruit you're going to know them. So the actions is going to be. Which goes back to what we were talking about. When we did the activity about the things that define you. Because what defines you. Is based off what you do. Not your idealistic view of you. Not the idealistic view that someone else has of you. But your consistent pattern of action. Is what defines who you are as a person. So if you don't like the definition of who you are. Then you can change your behavior. Which will therefore change your actions. Which will therefore change the definition of who you are. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the and three and one, my apologies. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unkadash, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of Elohim, having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof, from such turn away. People who look godly, but they deny the power of the word. 
because they refused to adhere to it. But you notice that he said they would be false accusers. Because there's nothing new under the sun. People always falsely accuse, especially in our culture. They know if you want if you wanted to get somebody out of there, all you had to do was say they had did something that was worthy of death, and that could get them killed. And this is what people did. Lying on people. Lying on people. And for what? Because niggas are sour. Niggas are sour. All the way around the bowl. Let's look at it, man. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 4. I got to crank it up a little bit. This ain't one of the instances where, because we done manifested Mashiach out of Exodus 23 and 1 before. So that's not really the singular focus this evening. You know, we're going to run and look at that particular story, but that's not the particular focus. The particular focus is to sit back and look at how this man feel about liars and how he does not particularly care for them. 17 and 4, the book of Proverbs, 17 and 4. A wicked doer give heed to false lips and a liar give ear to a naughty tongue. So what do we take from this? This man says somebody who is a wicked doer will listen to a lying mouth. And somebody who is a liar will listen to a naughty tongue. Let's see what the word naughty means in that particular verse. And after that, get your Roman chapter 6 and verse 16. And then after that, you should know where we headed to after that. But if not, John 8 and 44 and 1 John 3 and, and, 1 John 3 and 8. The word for naughty is hava. And that word means desire or engulfing ruin, destruction, or calamity. Calamity. People who have a who are, who a liar gives ear to mouths that cause destruction. Isn't that something ugly? Listen to a mouth that will call destruction. A liar likes to listen to a mouth that causes destruction. Mm -mm -mm. Romans six and sixteen. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself service to obey, his service ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So let's look at John 8 and 44. And after we look at John 8 and 44, let's swing around to Genesis chapter 3 and then go to 1 John 3 and 8. See, when you got a mess around see we have to look at something right and what we're going to be looking in genesis for is this cause that clearly because we're going to look at that satan is a liar and then when we yield our sir our member service to obey that means we're obeying his word we're obeying the things that he's speaking and these things bring destruction and we have to sit back and look at it who are we yielding ourselves to because who you yielding yourself to will is determining who you listen to and if that's who you listen to, then the book said that you're a liar and that you're an evil doer. Because it says clear as day, a wicked doer give heed to false lips. So if you're a wicked doer, you're going to listen to lies. John 8 and 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speak a lie, he speak of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So let's go look at it when he birthed that lie then. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have Elohim said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For Elohim doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And we know that Eve hearkened. And why did she hearken? Because she was a wicked doer in her inward parts. She had already had it in her heart and mind to transgress the word. This is why she gave heed to false lips. 
when we already have it in our mind to transgress the word, then it is quite natural for you to listen to someone who will tell you a lie and make you feel comfortable in that lie. Because that is what you want to believe anyway. Because that's what you want to do anyway. So then when you turn around and you're a liar, then you're going to listen to a destructive tongue. A tongue that will lead you to destruction. The adversary is seeking to lead you to destruction. See, Paul told us that we, are, we cannot be ignorant of the adversary's devices. Because we should know just from looking at this instance of how he came at Eve. His device was to play to her desire. This is why the book tell you in the flesh my in my flesh dwell no good thing because the flesh is evil inherently because it seeks to cause you to do the things that you ought not. So sinners will come to entice you with lies to make you feel comfortable in what you're about to go do even if you know it's wrong because that's what you want to hear and that's what you will adhere to. Which goes all the way back to what we were talking about last week. And I've said it once before. And I say it repeatedly. The desire for righteousness is minimal in this present dispensation of time. And has been minimal in every dispensation of time. Because we don't desire it. There's a reason why this man say the word of Yahuwah is a reproach to them. They don't have a delight in it. There's a reason why he says, seek ye the ancient past and you'll find rest for your souls. And they say we will not walk therein. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. Because men hate righteousness. They hate Elohim. They hate everything that he stands for. They hate his servants. They hate his children. They despise it. They abhor it. It is despicable and abominable unto them. The book of Proverbs does not say in vain that the just is an abomination to the unjust and the unjust an abomination to the just. It does not say that for nothing. Which goes back to what I always tell you. Everything after its own kind. You know, we don't read out the Apocrypha, but the Apocrypha said a wicked woman is the portion for a wicked man. And it also says not in those exact words that a righteous or virtuous woman is the portion of a righteous man because everything is going to be after its own kind. It's going to be after its own kind. Do you know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. And if you are after Alahim, then you will be around people who are of Alahim, who think like Alahim, who walk like Alahim, not people who serve him in name only, but not in deed and in truth. Everything after his own kind. That's what the law states. That's how it rolls. That's how it goes down. Nevertheless, we need to swing back around here. Do I need this particular verse? No. But you know, Proverbs chapter 19 also tells us how a poor man is better than a liar. But you know, some people love liars though. And I understand. People like to be told lies. It makes them feel better. They feel better about themselves. Where do we want to go at? Come over here to... uh. Proverbs 14 and 5. Proverbs 14 and 5. Mm, excuse me. There's a lot of people break that precept right there. Making league with unrighteous witnesses. Putting their hand with false reports. Stay yourself far away from that stuff. And you won't have to worry about it. 14 to 5, Proverbs says, A faithful witness will not lie, and a false witness will utter lies. Well, let's see, son, in Revelation chapter 2, chapter 1, my apologies. Say, A faithful witness will never tell a lie. Say, A false witness utter lies. We've already established that, that Satan is that false witness who utters lies. That's all he do is tell lies. And I know I've mentioned 1 John 3 and 8, but we all know what it says. For he that commits sin is of the devil. For this cause, the son of Elohim was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And actually, I need... Uh, does I, do I need Revelation chapter 1? I think I need Revelation chapter 3. I do need Revelation chapter 3. Let me make sure that's the one. Oh, it's 
it's escaping my brain. The verse is in my head, the word for word, but the location seems to escape me at the present time. Oh, there we go. Revelation 3 and 14. But we'll back it up at verse 11, just because I just feel like it. Revelation 3 and 11. Remember now, a false witness will tell you nothing but lies. A faithful witness will not tell you a lie. And after that, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my Elohim, and the name of the city of my Elohim, which is New Jerusalem, which come down out of Shamahim from my Elohim, and I will write upon him my new name. He that have an ear, let him hear with the Ruach, saith unto the synagogues, and unto the Malachim of the synagogue of the Doshian is right. These things saith the Amin, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Elohim. This is the faithful and true witness. Now we could go into many different areas with that particular statement that Amashiach makes right here, but we will not for the sake of time, because we could sit back and use that, and how he say in Psalms 19, that the, the, the lights in Shamahim, the stars and the sun and the moon bear witness, and they're a faithful witness, they're a faithful witness, every single solitary time they bear witness unto the truth. Every single solitary time. This is why the master said, if you be Abraham's seed, you would love me. He said that you would love me. Because I bear witness up to the truth as Abraham did. He said, but you don't love me because you are of your father. This is where we get the John 8 from, where we even went there. Because he was telling them the truth and they rejected it. People always like to say the Bible's written by a white man and this, all that, and the third. That's wicked nigga talk. Wicked niggas always try to discredit the word. If the word's so false, I done said this before. If the word's so false, then why do you give it so much attention? Nobody gives the back but get no attention. Nobody gives the Quran this type of attention. I'm for as forth as attacking the validity of the text. Oh, I guess because there's so many people that uh, talk about the Bible, huh? But this is just as many Muslims as it is Christians. Not even talking about people who professing to be Israelites according to the flesh versus being seek, calling themselves seekers of the way, followers of the way, or Yahudim. It's billions of Muslims. It's billions of Christians on this earth. People attack the validity of this text because they despise this man. Okay, we just had a conversation with this other day. Dude was like, okay. Somebody could look at the book and say, Yah is a killer, and why didn't he tell the people of Canaan to move out the land? What you mean, why he ain't telling them to move? What type of nigga is you? Why he ain't ask him to move? Why does he have to? What is, why does it click in your brain that you feel like God got to come ask somebody to do? He got to ask nobody to do nothing. Because these faggot niggas were sleeping with each other, sleeping with animals, worshiping false gods, worshiping the stars, serving the moon. You know what I'm talking about? Divination, witchcraft, all manner of abominations, telling lies, murdering, raping. Shall we continue? What is he asking him to do something for? I'm finna kill these niggas. Judgment has come. And that's it. What you mean? We just don't want to read that because then they have to deal with their own sins. And they have to deal with their own iniquity. So they have to try to discredit this man and make him invalid. No, he ain't invalid, nigga. You wicked. That's what it is, nigga. What you mean? Why he ain't asked the canines to leave? Why were these niggas humping camels, nigga? Huh? Why were they doing that? Why were they conjuring up spirits, nigga? Why was they doing that? Why were they sleeping with women on their menstrual cycle? Why was they doing that? Why were they stealing? Why were they lying? Why should he spare them? For what cause? He is justified in rendering fierce and swift judgment upon their head. Justified. Ain't a person walking this planet in the history of mankind that can sit back outside of Yahu HaMashiach that can sit back and say that they have not been guilty before the throne of Elohim. Therefore, you are in need of his mercy and his forgiveness and his salvation and his favor. What do you mean, nigga? What do you mean? You trying to make this man be how you want him to be. 
That man say my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. He don't operate. See, the problem is don't nobody want to see how y'all operate. And when they see how y'all operate, you see he the realest of the real. Thorough, solo, solid, unmovable, unshakable, uncompromising, kadesh, just, and righteous all together. And niggas don't want to get in line with it. So they want to do what fake, fall, phony niggas do, which is discredit the realest man to ever do it. By trying to attack and impugn his character because you flaw and you fake. Because niggas ain't real like niggas. Oh, if you got a problem with you, who are you? Can't tell me you real. You can't tell me that. If you got a problem with anything y'all do, you can't tell me you real. You can't tell me that you're not going to call me to believe it. Because he the realest. Everything he stands for is 100. And he's solid in everything he do. And his word has never failed. And if you got a problem with what he got what he got going on and what he say, I got a problem with you. Just like David said, I count your enemies as my enemies. And that's what it is, nigga. That's what it is, nigga. To whoever don't like it. You know what I'm saying? That's what it, whoever. You know what I'm saying? Screw everything you stand for, your whole family, the God you serve, all that, nigga. I don't see none of that. You not finna tell me you real and you got a problem with anything y'all got going on. You fake, you flowing, you phony, and you can stay away from me. That's how I see it. And screw who don't like it. Nevertheless, where was we at? I think we are already accomplished this task. Proverbs 19 and 5. I seen a nigga today say he don't want to be a martyr for the master. Try to clean it up. Talking about cause he want to see the white man get destroyed when he come back. Nigga, you just told everybody you don't want to die for the word, nigga. I heard you. Don't try to clean it up now. I don't want to be a martyr. I know you don't want to die for this. Niggas be flawed if you pay attention. He said, a false witness shall not be unpunished. He that speak lies shall not escape. So when you around here telling me lies, well, let's look back and see. First Kings chapter 22. 22. Niggas out they rabbit mind out here on these streets, man. I told y'all that last week, man. Y'all the realest. And anybody who real, gonna love him. That's why he say, if you was of the truth, you would love me because I proceed and that's what the master said. So if you was real and you was solid, you would love you who are Allahim and Bahashem Yahushua. You would love him. First King 21. Nigga don't love him because they not of the truth. That's why he said, My sheep hear my voice and they come unto me. He said, You're not my sheep, because you ain't heard my voice as I told, as I've said unto you. And when you look at all the people who had a problem with the prophets, you look at all the people who had a problem with Yahushua, they were all hypocrites, phony, and fake. And when you look at the people who he said would enter into the kingdom, he sat back and said that the, the publicans and the harlots would get in before you. Because even though they were living sour, these people was actually 100. They wasn't flogging and faking about what type of time they was on, and they knew they needed to change. So they stood before that man and said, you know what? We dead wrong. We going to get it right. Versus Hinton Ron Hill acting like you righteous, but you wicked as the day is long. Just a bastard demon child from hell is what they is. And I say, hey, I'm talking about the grave, nigga. Death. Sheol, not the fire and worms, death. They just like they daddy. They dead. Why they living? First Kings chapter 21. We'll pick it up at about verse 7. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Yasharal? Arise and eat bread, let thy heart be merry, and I will give thee the vineyard of Nabaoth the Jezreel. And she wrote letters in Ahab name. And sealed them with his seal, and sent letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling in the bath. And she wrote in the letter, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou did blaspheme Elohim and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And y'all know that he did this, that they did this to this man. And she was a false witness. And guess what? She did not go unpunished because he said dogs was going to lick up Jezebel and Jezreel. And that just wouldn't happen to that stinking bastard her. That's just what happened to her. Because she put her hand, and these Israelites supposed to knew better. To put their hand with this Hamite to be an unrighteous witness against Naboth. They lied on this man, and this man died behind a lie. So just like she thought to do unto him, it was done unto her. 
The only thing is you see that the judges didn't do a diligent inquisition to see if those things were so. Because if they would have done that, then those two men would have lost their life along with Jezebel for sending them to do it. See, a false witness that tell a lie, you going to perish. See, let me get you son. Psalms 101 and then Revelation chapter 21. See, when I ran across the word, I ain't had no problem with it. There was absolutely nothing in this word that I had a problem with. And when I say nothing, I mean absolutely nothing. It was nothing in here that this man say to do or not to do that I had a problem with. Period. I ain't have a problem with none of it. Psalm 101 and 1. I'll read the whole chapter. We got a little bit of time. I ain't have a problem with none of it. Not a single solitary word of it. You know what I'm saying? I done seen, I done had, you know, over the course of time, some people feel like, oh, women got to give up more than men and or men got to do this. What difference does it make if you love y'all? What you care what you got to give up? What do you care for? So clearly you don't love y'all. Clearly you got a problem with him because you think about yourself and not him. You forgot you were a sinner. That's your problem. You will forgot you needed a savior. He don't need no saving. You need saving. You forgot he's the creator and you're the creation. You forgot. Which takes me back to my number one point all the time. Righteous people are not loved, accepted, nor desired. Because we don't love, desire, or accept he who created us, whose name is righteous, and Yahuwah is his name. We don't accept him. And that's why I always mention that, because if you can look at it in a natural sense, then you can see how we're rejecting him, period. If you're paying close attention, we're rejecting him. The most righteous man to ever walk the face of this earth, we rejected him. And we rejected everyone who came before him, who was a living witness of the sufferings that he would come, come forth to do on our behalf. And we rejected him. Hold on, let me get that Acts chapter 5 before we read Psalm 101. Because I did say I was going to hit that. And y'all first brought that back to mind. So praise the Lamb. Acts 5 and 1. Liars don't go unpunished. Y'all got to think about that stuff, man. That's why y'all say he, he hate liars. Because he's that thorough. He that solid. He a real dude. So when you talk about real, you're talking about authentic. See, let's just break that down when we say, okay, somebody say, I'm a real man, or I'm a real woman, or I'm a real nigga, whatever the case they say. That is authenticity. Do you know what I'm saying? That means that what I say that I am about, that is what I am about. You know what I'm saying? That's what that means to be real. Like, when you sit back and you look at a lot of people like Pac when, back at the time period when he was alive rhyming because they felt like what he was rhyming, that was his life. A lot of people sat back and they gravitated to what Jay was spitting because what they were rapping about, they were lit. I'm talking about before they blew up because these niggas was balling and doing all this type of stuff and they ain't had no record deal of dudes seeing this and they felt the authenticity of this is how they really live. They're not selling me a dream. This is their life. This is how they live day in and day out. Day in and day out. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what it is to be real. Your honest, this is your authentic life. This is who you are. This is what you do. This is how you get down. What you say you stand for, that's what you stand for. How you say you live, that's how you live. The type of person you say you are, that's who you are. And see, you know what ends up happening? Another real person sees that and they respect it. And you know what they end up doing? They end up gravitating towards one another. That's why people say real recognize real. Real people recognize one another and they gravitate to each other and they begin to deal with one another. This is why old people always say a real man will choose a real woman and a real woman will want a real man because they want someone who is authentic. See, now you can be anything you want in 2017 with Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and all this old other stuff. You can be whoever you want to be. But then you forget that it's people who know you in real life. That can shatter the whole entire illusion that you're trying to craft to people who don't even care. Because if you're walking around worrying and, and concerned about how people view you on the internet, you're a special kind of lame. I'm talking about special kind of lame. A lane that can't even be quantified in the English language. Do you know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be concerned with that. 
We need to be concerned about how y'all look at us. That's what our concern need to be. How does he view me? How does he see my life? Is he pleased with it? Would he tap like? Would he double tap? Or he gonna double tap upside your skull? That's what you need to be worried about. We be worrying about the wrong things every day of the week. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira's wife sold a possession and kept back a part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why have Hashatan filled thy heart to lie to the Ruach HaKadosh and to keep back part of the price of the land? See, a wicked doer give heed to naughty lips. While it is remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto Allahim, the same way that Jezebel did it. Those two false witnesses, they gave wicked men, they gave naughty heart, they gave, they were liars, so they gave heed to a naughty tongue. They gave heed to it. And guess what the people, we could go, y'all know Matthew 26, they went and got false witnesses to lie on Mashiach. Y'all know that. Y'all know they went and did it. Because they gave heed to liars. And they were wicked doers, so they gave heed to lying tongues. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the Ruach, and great fear came on all that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Do you see the righteousness of Peter? Peter didn't come in and accuse her and say, You did this, and you did that, even though he knew she did it. Because I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to see if you're going to tell the truth. See, that's where people get the game mixed up. Just because I know you did something, I have to give you the opportunity to show for if you're going to be a true witness or a false witness. I have to do that. And she did, and guess what she did? Lied. And Peter said unto her, How is it that you agreed together to tempt the Ruach of Yahuwah? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ruach. And the young men came in, found her dead, carried her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the synagogue and upon as many as heard these things. Because if she would have stood in there and told the truth, she would have lived. But because she lied, she didn't go unpunished. If she would have told the truth, she would have lived. If she would have told the truth, she would have lived. Notice that she didn't know what happened to her husband, so y'all set it up that way. So she wouldn't have to come back. Oh, he done died. I'm going to go in there and tell him. Nah, you're going to tell him out of the earnest of your own heart, and you chose not to. You're going to die with him. Psalms 101. Mm -hmm. It was very petty. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Yahuwah, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when thou come unto me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slander his neighbor, him will I cut off. Because you know to slander somebody is to lie on them. Him that have a high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. They shall dwell with me. He that walk in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that work deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that tarry lies shall not tear, tell lies, shall not tarry in my sight. Now, we have, you know Revelation 21 say ain't nobody getting in the city except those whose names were written in the book. And anybody who commit abomination or love a lie going to be on the outside. That man said if you tell lies, you cannot dwell in his house. So it makes sense for you not to put your hand to be an unfaithful witness, to put unrighteous witnesses, nor for you to be with people who raise a false report. People who are uplifting, telling a lie, it'll get you killed, it'll get you punished, it'll get you cut off. But I said it because we got to end with it because it's 8.56. And it's a lot of other stuff I want to get with this. Y'all will and we get get it on the, on the Shabbat. Revelation 21 and 27. 
and then we'll end with Revelation 22 just for that thing to hit home. But I'm going to be gangster with it, and we're going to start in verse 9 in Revelation 22. But Revelation 21 and 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile, neither work whatsoever work abomination, or make a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb book of life. You make lies, you're not getting in that house. You're not getting in that house. Revelation 22 and 9, Then he saith unto me, make that 11, my apologies, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is Kadesh, let him be Kadesh still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Baruch are they that do his commandments, that they have may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For what for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love and make a lie. Hold on. Exodus chapter 20. He said, Whosoever love and make a lie on the outside. Oh, you love lies? And we just going taking it right back to the 10. That's all we're going back to look at in Exodus chapter 20. Just taking it right back to the 10. 20 and 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. A, and hallelujah for Yahushua in the world. I hope everybody understood all that to see. One of the key things 